The uh, sectioning here is gonna be based on a side parting. So that side parting comes back, then I split the head in half, basically from behind the ear to behind the ear. To start off the technique, I'm gonna take a vertical section straight from the parting down. So we'll have a weaker side or a less dense side, and then we'll have a heavier side in this cut. As I start to take the hair out, I'm going to start in the top part of this section. So normally when we cut a bob, we start in the bottom and work our way up. What I love about this is I get to determine the actual finger angle and I can see it better in my head of how I'm gonna start this cut so then I know exactly how much weight I'm leaving on the cut. And then I just follow that line straight down to the nape of the neck and then I can clean up that neckline later. So check my finger angle. Now, if they have higher density of hair, then I might shift my finger angle to be a little higher elevation. As I'm working through, this is pretty easy just to kind of visualize that, pointing it right down at the nape. See my finger angle as I'm working through it. And now I'll just continue down that section, uh, staying vertical through it and just connecting those two points. So I've got my point from above, it's right in the inside of my finger down to my fingertip. My goal with this is to build a consistent weight line horizontally across the back and then start connecting into the front, creating a little bit more of a triangular feel on the right side. And then on the left side, that's my part side, that's the weaker side. I'm gonna cut more of a rounded shape in that. All right, so you can see I'm continuing through same way. Everything's coming back to that guideline, the previously cut hair. So I take a little bit of the new hair, bring it back to quite a bit of the old hair. So I have a nice strong guide and you can start to see that buildup of weight in there. And this is one of my favorite things about um, cutting the hair this way is just watching the shape, the actual shape of the bob that you're gonna be working on anyways, unfolding right before your eyes. That's the most important part to me because I can make that first cut and then determine is this exactly where I want it to sit or do I want it a little bit shorter? So that back point where the nape is, that's actually, you can see how long that is. We're gonna take most of that off. So that's kind of the, the great part about this. When we start cutting from the bottom up, a lot of times we cut that bottom so short because we're trying to cut it exactly the way it's gonna live. When you cut it from the top down, I feel like it gives you a little bit more freedom and you don't even think about that bottom. All right, so now we're gonna work on the opposite side. So right here, you can see that my finger's now pointing up in the air. That's the biggest difference in the two sides. You want your thumb to be pointing in the direction you're moving. So this would be my new hair. I take the new hair, pull it to the guideline, right? And I bring it here and I cut it. So then I take my next section, new hair to the guideline. If I did the same combing on the opposite side of the head, I'd be pushing the guide into the hair. So if I shift my hand like this, and now I come over top, I'm now grabbing the new hair, combing it over and bringing it into the guide. So new hair to the guide, new hair to the guide. That's the goal as we work through it. We're traveling. Um, we traveled all the way across the back of the head, uh, little by little, half inch section at a time. And then when we get to the behind the ear, that's over directed straight back to us to cut a parallel line to our shoulders. So if I'm staring straight into the back of the head, that line's parallel to my shoulders as I go through. As we go through, and cut the head, right? If you look at the surface of the head, the way that I think about this is we're cutting on a round surface. So 45 changes throughout the head shape. If I'm holding the hair at this angle at the start, you can see that from all the way up to the occipital bone, which is right here, that's all the same angle, which is 90 degrees coming out from the head, right? Then as soon as it gets over the occipital bone, then it starts to go away from the head because the head curves away. So what happens is this just gets heavier and heavier because the degree goes from being 90, which would be all this, to then whatever this is, which is straight out from the head that way. So as I'm coming up, it becomes more 45 degrees up here. So when I pulled the hair out and I cut my first section here, this was at about 45 degrees. But then as I go into the nape and into the neck, now I'm at 90 degrees, so the degree changes because I don't base everything like the world is flat. I base everything like the world is round. The one thing I want you guys to notice in this part of the haircut is my elevation on the sides. This is where a lot of people don't really go into detail. They're so obsessed with the back of the cut and cutting that bob shape, but there's so much that goes into the sides and the elevation of it because you don't want it to be super heavy on the sides because then you can't get a nice blunt cut line. So when you look at all these haircuts that have 
these super nice uh, blunt line, blunt angles here, it's because it's slightly elevated throughout the side, so it lightens up the hairline, and then you can go through and cut a really nice precise line. If I didn't elevate that hair right there, then what would happen is um, it would be too heavy, and then I would cut it and it would just look like it was just hanging there. Elevate the sides as you're working. So see that elevation, I'm not straight down, I'm elevating it nice and high to make it nice and light through it. You can see right there, like right under the ear where that hole is, that's what we're taught in school to freak out about when in reality, that's where the bob's gonna be. It's gonna be at that point. If you wanted it to be a little bit longer bob, then you would cut all this graduation longer and then you would have a longer feeling around the ear there. All right, guys, so we're gonna continue through the right-hand side here, and this is gonna be a little more over-directed back. Uh, also notice that I've sectioned off the top because I'm gonna cut that separate, um, but I'm over-directing everything straight back. I wanna create more of a triangular feel on this side. The opposite side, I kind of followed that diagonal parting through, gave it a little bit of a triangular feel, but I followed more of the round of the head. I'm cutting a straight um, diagonal forward line, over-directing it back, pushing a little extra weight to the to the right side because we're gonna create this nice asymmetrical uh, bob feel. Um, Shop FSE, all the tools that I use in these videos to create these videos, the clips, the combs, the scissors. And so now I'm just working through the top section. So I let that down. I work through the back first, really just connecting these back sections. So I'll comb the hair down, figure out what hair wants to fall in the back and then what hair wants to stay on the sides. And that's kind of how I decide uh, how I connect it. Take my guide from underneath and just continue that elevation. So you can see no over direction, my finger angle, how I'm cutting it. I'm really just following the guideline from underneath, but I'm keeping it pretty high elevation throughout. You can also see that there's a slight graduation um, laying underneath there. That's because of that elevation that I'm doing right now. I'm gonna go in with Moroccan oil just to smooth it out. I'm gonna do a flat wrap blow dry. All right, so now we're gonna go through and we're gonna detail the outer perimeter. So notice how I'm just using the scissor to kind of draw my line first and I work through. Now, the reason this is so easy to go through and cut is because of that elevation, because of the light feel to that outer perimeter line. So um, if I didn't elevate it, this would be very difficult. I'd be chopping through it for hours right so just going through detailing that line you can see how beautiful this all falls together i always blow dry it at the end just to get a little bit of that weight out now i'm going in with one of my favorite texturizers it's a dry cutting scissor and a texturizer so that's why it glides through so easy that's on freesaloneducation.com or shop fse now i go in with my t trimmer just to detail the line even more and then finish it off with a little bit of moroccan oil hairspray 